Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at the Virtual Indigenous Artist Hub, brought to you by Punctuate Theatre and Dream Speakers. I'm Rebecca Sadowski, a Métis dance and theatre artist from Edmonton, and I'm also an artistic associate with Punctuate Theatre. Today, I have the pleasure of chatting with Jolene Valentine, Métis actor, writer, and educator. Jolene is the Director of Education with Rapid Fire Theatre and is a senior player performing weekly in theatre sports, maestro, chimprov, and the Sphinxes. She's also the creator of RTF's outreach program, working with Boyle Street Education Centre, iHuman, and Boys and Girls Clubs. Her teaching and performing have taken her to many places throughout Canada, the US, and Europe. Jolene is also an actor on film and a writer working on Edmonton-based television show Caution May Contain Nuts on Aboriginal People's Television Network. I do my job just as well as all of you. The only difference is my gender. Exactly. So Jolene, thank you so much for joining us today. I can't wait to dive in and learn more about you, your work, and what you're up to in these days. Um, I mean, I think all of us have our ups and downs, but I've been finding it really useful to go in different artistic directions than I'm used to. Um, I think uh -huh. the biggest change is obviously there's no more audiences or live audiences. And yeah. um, I, I work a lot with live audiences, so it's been an adjustment. Um, but it's also, yeah, ex what I said, like open doors to look at some projects that maybe I had been putting off or or been too afraid to tackle. And that's really brave because I know like for myself, I will have one day that I'm like, I'm productive and I'm doing things and I'm gonna take a dance class online. And then the next day I'm like, no, nah, I don't have it in me. I just can't do it today. Yeah, I got a switch right before this happened and I didn't realize that you that people could see the like hours you log in a particular game and I had a friend reach out to me and ask me if I was okay because of the hours I put into Animal Crossing. <laughs> what has Rapid Fire done since the lack of performances and have they done any um, initiatives in this time? Right off the bat it was really hard to navigate not knowing how it would affect artists and uh, if we'd be actually like jeopardizing putting them into a category where they couldn't receive government funding. Um, so once we kind of got some clarity on that we started moving forward with classes and shows. So we are committed to doing like a a show, a regular show every week. Um, we'll kind of be experimenting with those, sh with what those shows look like. Um, I, I've started teaching classes. Mostly, I've begun with kid classes. Uh, we start adult classes right away, um, and. Uh, I also started coming out with some free family uh, improv Hello, everyone. activities Hello, that they could do at home. Um, it's just a game a week, uh, but something that you can do with your family and it's really easy and it gets the kids active and using their imaginations and it's fun to do with family. You, you robbed a bank? No, you were nothing. I've been doing some research on some family history. Uh, I had I had uncovered like a, a story about my great grandfather who was one of eight brothers who uh, actually were in the army in World War II. And so it was eight fighting indigenous brothers, Métis brothers. Um, and I was just like fascinated by this story, like the number of them, the fact that all of them served in some capacity. And not only that, but their father and uncle had served prior to them. And I was just like, wow, what does this do to a family? Like how does, and they all survived. Wow, um, what wow. they didn't talk about and what the story doesn't really like go into is the, the like trauma that they had uh, coming back and the PTSD and those sort of things. And when I look at my current family, I just see some of that trickle down and, and uh, yeah, it, I, when he first asked me to, about this project, I was, I was thinking about going in that direction. Um, but with the state of my family and the pain that they kind of are in, it didn't feel like it was maybe my story to tell yet, or even um, just that we weren't in a place that my family had the tools to uh, deal with this content. So, uh, so it started making me kind of think of what ways that I could 
could express this um, that wouldn't maybe offend or uh, scare some of my family members away. Right. And then when I started thinking about that, I started putting myself in their perspective. And uh, yeah, and my partner who I live with and I'm currently quarantined with, yep, yep. Uh, musician. And I work with him many times in an improv capacity or um, comedic songs here and there for like little bits in a show, but never like uh, fully worked on music. And this was my opportunity to kind of uh, try something kind of completely different lyrics are are coming and then and then kind of pairing them with the kind of music or the tones i've been focusing on the writing and the and the story elements or the the poetry elements um yeah. i cannot play an instrument myself <laughs> but i am planning to sing on these songs so that's scary but also exciting can I ask you, I didn't know you were Métis, and can you speak a bit more to how you identify with your heritage and, and your roots? I said my family has, without getting into too many details or dark details, they, they've been pretty dispersed and I didn't really have a strong connection growing up, um, other than through my aunt, my wonderful, beautiful aunt. Uh, and she was so uh, involved in my learning of that process and she really tried to make it accessible for me even as a child. I remember she wrote a, uh, a kid's book um, helping me kind of understand my heritage because I remember asking like, if I'm Métis, what part of me is Métis? Is it my elbow? Is it my nose? And she was like, well, you know, we're rainbow people. And this is this is kind of how she presented it. Um, and I, I'd say that like my biggest connection is through storytelling. Um, she was an elder and she, she would verbally tell stories and uh, pass down these stories. And she before she passed she said that that was also my gift and that that's how i carry on uh with our family heritage is is those oral st storytelling or other forms of storytelling and uh this process has been exploring another route very similarly like my metis heritage we didn't really connect with until we were a bit older and sort of starting to ask our grandparents questions about you know my grandma's Cree mom and you know how they would speak Cree at home but my grandma would never admit that or like you know scraping hides in the backyard and she's like oh yeah maybe like just hidden it's very hidden really unfortunate because that was our experience too my father he actually sort of rejected the uh identity rejecting that identity was a form of protection um i think he still grapples with that to this day and it. Yeah it yeah it's it's a uh, it's sometimes really sad and uh, unfortunate but i think as we start learning more and more um and incorporating it more into the education uh, stream i think that that will start to take a new shape and people can start um really starting to find that pride again and and reclaim it's so interesting how these stories kind of all are interconnected with these different themes of shame or like in my family's case, it was poverty and just not wanting to be associated with being Métis or Cree. Alberta is home, Edmonton is home. And I have been really privileged as an artist and been able to tour a lot and seen many different communities and cities, companies and there's something really special here. I feel like, uh, you know, we're in this mix between small town and, uh, you know, big city. We kind of ride the cusp between those like extremes, blue collar and, and, you know, white collar. There's a lot of perspective in Edmonton. And I feel like there's a lot of community people really watch for each other you know the the make something edmonton <laughs> movement I, yeah. I really i really connected with that i feel like this is a place that if you have an idea you can work hard and you can really accomplish it my writing partners and i joey and gordy lucius um have a project in the mix uh we just we won an nsi uh grant uh or 
project to kind of uh, look at a pilot project that we're working on. Um, and CBC has shown interest as well. As well. It's, uh, it would take place here in Edmonton and it's about a Filipino family um, and two kind of extreme worlds. So I'm hoping something will happen with that. You know, check out Rapid Fire Theatre. There's going to be live shows and workshops available. So check out the website and yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much for the interview. Bye bye. And thank you to the viewers who have tuned in for the virtual Indigenous Artist Hub brought to you by Dream Speakers and Punctuate. These companies would also like to thank their funders who've made this all possible. And I hope to see you all again at the next video where we highlight another Indigenous artist.